What is good everybody? Today we are diving into a special video that I've never done here before on the channel, at least to my knowledge. I think I've done maybe like a, a little pitch of this, but I don't think I've ever done a countdown such as this, man. Today we're going to be counting down my top 10 favorite Mattel action figures that we have ever seen in the history that Mattel has had the WWE action figure license. Now, obviously, no basics are going to be in this. It's going to be all elites, all ultimates, but I do have some honorable mentions right here. None of these figures that you see before you are in the countdown. These are all of my honorable mentions, and I wanted to shortly give them their flowers because there's a lot of good pieces here, and I wanted to kind of touch on them. All of these could have had a case for the top 10, and I've went back and forth, and it took me a long time to actually get my top 10, and my top 10 might shift here and there. Every single day really but we'll get into that as we discuss but let's dive into the honorable mentions starting out first we have this top picks Rey Mysterio I just love this figure I, I really you know a lot of people don't really give this figure any credit and it's like 15 bucks on ringside right now or 12 bucks or something like that it's so damn good I don't know how people are buying this it's unbelievable it crushes every other Rey Mysterio ever made I think this figure is fantastic next up is Elite 45 Seth Rollins this one kind of writes itself if he was on updated formula you know double jointed arms bigger legs this this isn't even the stock figure, I know that, but this figure could go up higher if they redid it somehow, I don't know. New Ultimate Cody, fantastic piece. I love this figure. Didn't care for the head sculpts that much, but I had to mention it. I love the coat. I love the attire. Love the formula. Just a good one. Just a really good one. And another Cody we have is the Defining Moments one. Another one that's an honorable mention. I love both of these. These are my favorite Cody's we've seen so far, and maybe we'll have one that cracks the top 10 one day, but these are outside the top 10 looking in, but they're certainly worth mentioning. Then we have Defining Moments Sting, another great one. Really Really, he probably would have cracked the top 10 if he had that basic head sculpt on it and the arms weren't so jacked. He probably would have cracked the top 10. And if Sting ever returns to WWE and gets a, Le a Legends deal, he could end up in the top 10 for sure. We have the Chase Elite 70 Dolph Ziggler. I love this. Great attire. Really, the formula is the only thing keeping this guy away. And he's single jointed, so that kind of docks him a little bit as well. We also have Elite 74 Finn Balor. Probably my favorite non-demon Finn Balor ever made. Love the jacket. Love the head sculpt. Love the attire. Love this era of Finn and Balor, but both of these had to be in my honorable mentions. This is the From the Vault series draft, Defining Moments John Cena. Certainly one that I like to throw up there in my honorable mentions, as well as the Elite 91, Randy Orton in the white gear. Two of my favorite wrestlers of all time, both double jointed, both very nice, but not enough to crack into the top 10 here today. We have a few different Jeff Hardys right here, and I love all three of these in their own right. You have the Survivor Series with the braids, you have the Elite 71 with the pink and the alternate head sculpts. I love this pink attire, it's such a good one, and then the two pack with Triple A another great one. None of these are on double jointed arms, and that did dock them a little bit in my overall criteria. And we're going to dive into the criteria before we get into the top 10 officially, but these three Jeff Hardys were on the outside looking in. Elite 99 Brock Lesnar. Love this. I think it was so unique. Very articulated. Great details. This one's a beast. I love this figure. The Ruthless Aggression Shelton Benjamin, one of my top figures from last year. I know I fixed it up a little bit, but it's still a beast. Well, a figure that I waited on for years and years from Mattel that they finally gifted us. And then the last honorable mention has to be the ultimate edition Kane. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be the Attitude Era, you know, Attitude Era Ring Kane or the Raw is War Kane Ultimate Edition, but this one is just so special and so close to cracking the top 10. This is a beast of a figure. Just unbelievable. Love the details. Easily, I would say this is the best Kane action figure ever made, I bet. Anyways, that is our honorable mentions. Plenty of great figures there, but they did not crack my top 10. But let's explain the criteria. A lot of the stuff that goes into the criteria is a lot of the things that go into our other rankings on the channel. How happy was I with the figure overall, the likeness, the memories probably tied around it, my personal favoritism or bias does go into this, posability, details, execution of details. I think of it kind of like a graph or a chart. So if you had on the y-axis, if it was favoritism or how much I like the wrestler, and then on the x-axis, if you had how good of a figure it was, if you looked at the top right corner of that graph, that's probably where you'd find a lot of these figures. Some of my top favorite guys with some of the best figures ever of those guys, and that's kind of how that criteria shakes out but but with that being said let's dive into my personal top 10 favorite WWE Mattel action figures of all time So for my number 10, it's going to be the Ringside Exclusive Wolfpack Sting. Now this was gifted to me by one of my patron members, Anthony, and I appreciate it every single day. But when I got this figure in hand, I knew that it immediately had to be in my top 10. Now, you will also possibly hear a lawnmower in the background, and I do apologize if you hear that. But I do appreciate this figure so very much, and uh, it's just beautiful. It does have a little nick on the nose right there, not the biggest deal to me. But if the Defining Moments had this head sculpt with the white face paint and smaller arms... 
that figure would probably be on the list, but this one was too good to pass up. I love this figure. It's a beast. It looks amazing. Sting's one of my favorites of all time. Had to be in my top 10. And number nine is the SummerSlam Elite Dolph Ziggler. And I know this one's kind of fixed up and they have clothes on them and stuff, but just at base level... This is my favorite Dolph Ziggler, and if you guys know me, I love Dolph Ziggler, always been a fan of his work. And this formula's perfect, the head sculpt's damn near perfect, I love the attire, it poses around fantastic, he's one of my favorites. I mean, that pretty much sums it up, man. It's, it's a beautiful piece, I do believe it was my number one elite of 2023, and I have no, I, I, I still think I nailed it, I still think I nailed it. I know, that, like, not everybody's gonna agree with me, but if you just looked at it objectively, looks just like the talent, poses around fantastic, great formula, checks every single box that you could possibly want out of an action figure. Dolph Ziggler is money, and this is probably the most recent figure on this list. I'm not entirely sure. It could be. I, I don't know off the top of the dome, to be honest. I'm just, uh, I don't even have the figures out right in front of my eye sockets, but this is my number nine figure. Easily, good, good stuff. Could be higher. Who knows? Depending on the day. At number eight, we got a sleeper that I feel like a lot of people forget about, man. But growing up, Kurt Angle was one of my favorites. And I thought that this would... Actually, this entire storyline was one of my favorites, man. It really drew me into wrestling, I think. And without this storyline and without Kurt Angle, who even knows if I'd be a wrestling fan, man? Who, know, who knows what would have happened? But as a wee lad there, man, I love the storyline between Austin and Angle. And this is the embodiment, sorty of... Sorty. What the hell am I saying? Sort of of that. The Kurt Angle jersey, the shorts. It's, it's a street gear. You guys know I love street gear elites. It's not double jointed it's not updated but you can cover up his jack torso with the jersey i like the screaming expression all of the bells and whistles this figure comes with such an under this may be one of the most underrated elites ever i love the shin cut right there the socks the trainers it's such a damn good figure and just the alliance angle and everything i know a lot of people give it shish but for me as a kid man that shish was incredible and i i love this figure it, it's so good it could be higher honestly but i didn't want to get you know too crazy with it but I love it. It's even training shorts. It's it, like this is the Uso style crotch, which I think upgrades it even more. I love this figure, man. This is a damn good one. I love this Kurt Angle. At our next spot is going to be the Monday Night War Stone Cold Steve Austin. So I guess technically this might be the clearest. I don't know. I know it's kind of a re-release, which is essentially why it's not higher, I guess. But this really is like a perfect Austin figure release. You know, I complain about the jean mold, but at the end of the day, I love all the accessories. It is the Defining Moments Austin re-release, but I like the head sculpt better than the original. It's got the graphic on the front and back of the shirt. And while it's not my favorite Austin ever in terms of what they could potentially do, it's probably the best Austin they've ever made to this date. And until they give us a really good Austin in shorts and, you know, they nail it with all the bells and whistles, this is going to be the one that takes my, you know, the front mantle. And he's one of my favorites of all time. So this figure really just encaptures that moment. This and that last angle you just saw, you put those together, man. I mean, that's just everything about it right there. That's just the chef's kiss for me. Coming in at number six is the Ultimate Edition Seth Rollins. I love this formula. I love Seth Rollins. This robe is magnificent. I, re I mean, really, if this gear was any better, it would probably be higher. But I love the jacket in itself. And the figure is just a great specimen. It's definitely one of my favorite Ultimate Editions I've ever done. It's up there, man. It is so damn good. In every way, this figure is just a beast incarnate. You know what I mean? It is just the beast. It is the best. It is so awesome. I love this Ultimate Edition Seth Rollins. It had to be in my top 10 Mattels of all time. I think if you look every, if you look at everything objectively, love the torso, love the head sculpts, all the pieces and the things we got with this thing. I remember seeing this at WrestleMania 39 on display, and I fell in love instantly. It's a great one. Had to be included in my top 10. In our top five now, man, we have the Rob Van Dam Tiger Stripes. Again, very nostalgic for me personally. A gear I waited on from Mattel forever. The head sculpt is a repeat head sculpt, but at least it's a good one. It is double jointed arms, but this gear and having a new RVD Elite was so massive. And being another one of my favorite guys of all time, this figure had to be on there. I remember when we kind of had rumors of the Tiger Stripes RVD coming, and we knew that he was coming in a future line. And this is the attire I begged for for years. Finally obtained it. And it's everything I could wish for. Yeah, I love this figure. I, I love picking it up, posing it around. The Tiger Stripes is just, oh God, what a great one. So happy to have this figure in the collection as a massive RVD guy. Definitely my favorite RVD. I like this RVD more than the Ultimate. Even if the Ultimate has more articulation, this one is the best. 
At our number four spot is the Ultimate Edition Finn Balor. Now, I can truly say that the Demon Finn Balor is one of my favorite gimmicks, characters, everything about it. I love Finn Balor, one of my favorite talents in the world, one of my favorite wrestlers today in the current, you know, at the time of this recording. I, I love his in-ring work. I think he's so good at what he does, and this Demon Persona is uh, one of those gimmicks that you just fall in love with, man. I love everything about the demon character and everything like that, and this figure is just so badass. I love the tongue-out head sculpt. I love the pissed-off head sculpt that it comes with. The only thing keeping this thing out of the top three figures ever from Mattel, for me, is no butterfly joints. It is an early-on rendition of an Ultimate Edition, so it doesn't have, you know, everything right. It doesn't have pinless joints. It's not perfect by any stretch. However, it's still damn good, and it's so toyetic and badass. It had to be included in my top five, and I wouldn't rank this, you know, I think we did our top, you know, I ranked every Ultimate Edition before, and I think he made like the top seven or seven or six or something like that, but when I do those rankings, I try to leave my personal favoritism out of it and try to look at it, you know, try to give it a different lens, and so that's why in my personal top ten, this figure would come in higher than Seth Rollins. But if I were to rank the Ultimate Editions without my personal favoritism and bias in there, I think that Seth Rollins would be higher on that list, if that makes sense. So yeah, Finn Balor, he is that good. This figure is fantastic. I don't know how the hell we don't have an updated Finn Balor Demon Ultimate. This is the last good demon they made. Everyone after this has been trashed. Ah, uh, give me an update. I want WrestleMania 39 Demon Finn Balor with the updated formula. Butterfly joint, Seth Rollins torso. Give it to me. In the top three, you had to know this figure was going to be on there. I praise this figure so much, and I still truly think that it is objectively. You step back and you look at it, it's the best Ultimate Edition that Mattel's ever made. When you look at everything included, man, and everything about this thing, it just feels more quality than anything Mattel's ever made. It's absolutely ridiculous how beastly this figure is. I love the seamlessness between the torso, the formula, the head sculpts. It just feels like it was made in a lab, which I guess technically, I mean, it was made in a factory, I guess. But you know what I mean? It was like it was handcrafted by some sort of creator. I mean, it's just ridiculous how good this figure is. Uh, the Beast Incarnate himself, Ultimate Edition 15, Brock Lesnar. This is, uh, this is the best. This thing is such a beast, and I can't really say anything else. This figure could, in, like, honestly come in at number one, but uh, there's other things that play a factor into my favorite figures ever, so that's just what it is. But this is objectively the best Ultimate Edition when you look at things all together. At number two is the Defining Moments Chris Jericho. This is probably one that a lot of people didn't think about, but... This is one of those similar to the Austin, similar to the Angle, man. Without uh, this era of Chris Jericho and everything, man, I don't even know if I'd be a wrestling fan. I mean, this is one of those defining moments, and it was not only a defining moment released by Mattel, but a defining moment in my life personally, you know what I mean? So I remember him winning both championships, beating Austin and The Rock, and Jericho was one of my first favorite wrestlers ever, and this figure just, I don't know, it's like a time capsule, right? I look at this figure, and it just brings me back to a time in life, and that's kind of what this is, but also on top of that, it's a great figure head to toe. It nails it. I always love these style kick pads with the Jericho on the side, this gear with the yellow and the reflective logos that he used to rock back then the red tips and the hairs are just such a nice piece of detail that they probably didn't even have to include i love the head sculpt for what it is it's so good and i know it's single jointed and whatever but you know you include both championships men on card this thing's beauty it's just awesome i love this piece it's one of my favorite mattels ever easily in my top three top five every day of the week i know i say like this isn't number two it is number two but Again, man, these things, I feel like I, I switch back and forth every day, you know, depending on the day. These figures are just so good, and it's so close in criteria on how these figures go up and down that it could change, you know. But uh, the same 10 probably remain, but, you know, they, they go up and down, I guess, depending on the day. But this Chris Jericho is such a piece. I love it. I, I hope one day we get a re-release of this or more versions of Chris Jericho. And for my number one is going to be the Ultimate Edition Series 10 John Cena. You knew it had to be the GOAT. It had to be some sort of John Cena figure. 
And I know this figure is not perfect by any stretch, but it's one of my favorite John Cena gears of all time, and John Cena being my favorite wrestler of all time. I know I've said that, that Brock Lesnar is the best ultimate, right? But I would say that if I did my personal favorite and not looking at it like, oh, that's my favorite wrestler, then I would say the Brock's the best. But in terms of my favorite figure that Mattel's ever done, I think that it's this John Cena. And I even struggle with this decision myself. And it's been, the reason this video's taken so long to make, and the reason I've never done it before, is because I could never really agree to a top 10, man. And as much as I rank things and love to rank things, this was a very challenging thing to rank. But I love this gear. It's one of my favorite Cena gears of all time. I always love this look for Cena. I like the black and white, the the HLR, or Hustle Loyalty Respect in the black and white is fantastic. The chain gang shorts, the white and black bicep band. You have the chain gang over here and the You Can't See Me in White over here. There's plenty of other attires that I'd love for them to make. And maybe they will make a figure or a John Cena that I like more than this one. You guys know that I don't really particularly care for this John Cena shoe mold. But, and there's so many good, there's so many good John Cena figures out there in terms of elites. But there's also some that stink. And I think with the moment that this is and the time that this represents and the details that they could get into this figure. This one is my favorite Mattel of all time, and I think this is pretty accurate. I think so. Again, man, you know, you could ask me on a different day and it may change, but I think for now, this is my number one Mattel figure of all time is this John Cena, and that's just the way I look at it, man. I think, I think that's true, and I know it has the ugly torso and everything, but if you leave the shirt on there and, you know, you, it, it doesn't have pinless joints, it's not all that, but when I look at this figure, man, I just, I love it. I love all the different things about it. And I'm sure maybe one day Mattel will make a better John Cena. But for now, this is the one that wears the crown to me. So that is my top 10 WWE Mattel figures of all time, according to me, personally. My favorite. It's my list, Brad. You make your own list down in the comment section below. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap up this video, man. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I'd love to know what your list is down in the comment section below. Also, also let me know what you think of my list down below. Does it make sense what I'm saying about the Ultimate? Like, the Ultimate Brock is what I think the best Ultimate Edition. Like, the best quality figure that Mattel is. But in terms of my favorites, I would say that the John Cena is my favorite. Does that make any damn sense? But anyways, man, huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Love those guys so much. Thank you guys so very much for all that you guys do. You guys are absolutely incredible, but I am getting the hell out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. I'll catch you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>